summertime, baby, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. And you know what that means? It's hot, it's humid. And trust me, heat stroke is nothing you want to contend with. It can sneak up on you slowly, so unlikely you'll even see the warning signs. And not to be too dramatic, but it can even kill people. And it's something I take very seriously nowadays. That's why in the summertime, it is super crucial to stay on top of your nutrition and hydration on those long, hot rides. With that said, I'm gonna share some quick tips on surviving the summertime heat so you can still get a bike ride in and some signs to look out for for heat-related illnesses. First up, what to wear. What do I wear? What we wear can directly affect how we feel and then perform on the bike, so plan accordingly. Now, even though it's hot out and I'm tempted to grab a short sleeve or a sleeveless jersey, I usually go for something like this on a really hot sunny day. It provides a bit of sun coverage. It's a nice light color, a loose fitting jersey that's gonna allow air to move around my body, not get too stuffy. It's good to remember that sun can still penetrate through jersey materials if they're not sun rated. So still lather up with some sunscreen, even if you don't think you're gonna need it. This will obviously prevent sunburns and then the discomfort that comes along with it. But also, who wants gross, leathery skin when they're older? Definitely not me. Now, it's a bit of an ongoing fact about me. I just run hot, especially with this dark hair basking in the sunlight. So, particularly in the summertime, I'm gonna make sure I have a nice vented helmet, something like this that lets the air flow around the head. Now, if it's super, super hot, I might even dunk this in the river just to keep the head cool. If it's super hot outside and you can feel your body temperature rising, that's when I like to rip the jersey off and dip it in the river to just cool the core temperature down. Now, believe it or not, wearing things like bib liners, body armor, even sports bras for women can trap heat around the core of the body and not let you cool down. So. Take some time throughout the day to pull off the body armor and let the body catch up so that you can ride for longer. Now, this might seem like obvious information to some people, but staying hydrated on those hot, sweaty summer rides is even more important than we give it credit for. Hydrating with plain water just isn't enough. So consider adding electrolytes to your water on those big, sweaty rides so that they can replenish the nutrients that we're losing while sweating and particularly sodium. Now, if you plan to ride over an hour, realistically, we all need water. According to the American Council on Exercise, we should actually be prehydrating before our big efforts that we know we're gonna be hot and sweaty, and then we should be hydrating immediately after our ride. During our ride, it's recommended to have seven to 10 ounces of water every 10 to 20 minutes. Now that's a lot of numbers there, so let me do the quick math. It's about a liter of water per hour of exercise. Obviously, that's gonna depend on your body, your weight, and where you are in the world. So, when in doubt, water it out. Just made that up on the spot. If that's a lot of water and you can't carry it on your bike or on your person, perhaps getting a nice little water filter like this to take on rides when you know you're gonna be passing either creeks or rivers to replenish your water. Now this little number has been on a load of rides with me. It fits right into my pocket. So if I'm gonna be out riding for more than an hour and I can't have enough water on me, always bring this little guy. Personally speaking, I find it hard to eat when I'm really hot and the body is exerted. So I've started using high calorie drink powders. I just put them in my bottle, a couple hundred calories later. And then even if you can't eat, you're still getting in some nutrition. Now, other snacks you can bring on your ride if you think your stomach might struggle with real food, but you still need hydration, think fruits. I love bringing stuff like apples and oranges. They're tasty, they're quenching, and they keep my mouth nice and moist. Now, even though I love just slogging up a big dirt forest service road, in the summertime, especially in the heat of the day, I tend to ride more on the single track climbing trails. Basking in the sun on those hot, dry roads might do good things for your tan, but it's gonna wear you out and fatigue you even quicker, trust me. Time exposed to the elements, be it sun or other, can really wear us down, so save the tanning for the beach. Caution. In general, a day with a heat index over 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius, it's recommended to use extreme caution when exercising and recreating outdoors. It can easily lead to heat exhaustion or even a heat stroke. 
Here are some signs to look out for. Signs of heat exhaustion include heavy sweating, fast or weak pulse, nausea or vomiting, dizziness and fainting among other things, in which case you wanna cool down the body and potentially seek medical help. Now signs of heat stroke are high body temperature, fast, strong pulse, headache, nausea and confusion among other things. In this case, move the person to a cooler place and seek medical help ASAP. This is nothing you wanna mess around with. Where we ride, how we prep, what we choose to wear, that's gonna be different for all of us. Perhaps you're less worried about the heat of the day, maybe you're more worried about that high alpine sun exposure, but either way, be conscious of your decision making so you don't regret them later. Keep your exertion levels down just a bit in the heat of the day, maybe even try riding earlier in the morning or later in the evening when it's just a tad cooler. Thanks so much for watching the video today. I hope these hot weather riding tips help you to keep on shredding through the summer months.